Retrieval Augmented Generation has become a standard when you want to feed a large language model with your own knowledge base. If you've got text files, this is quite easy. Convert the text into a vector using an embedding model and store everything into a vector database. But how does this work with more complex data like a PDF? PDFs are more than just files containing text. They include text, but also images and tables. These elements are usually not standalone. Their sequence and arrangement is also important. And this is quite difficult to represent. Thanks to new multimodal models, tables and images are no longer lost in the process and retrieval augmented generation over PDFs can be significantly improved compared to before. So let's first talk about one of the possible approaches in theory. We extract all text elements, table elements and images from the PDF. Then we will create a summary for each element using an LLM. For the text elements and tables we can use a language model and for the images we can use the new GPT-4 vision model. Next we take the summaries and store them into a multi-vector retriever together with the corresponding embeddings. We also store the raw documents there. For the images it's only the summary because currently I've not seen a way to process images and text into a single request to OpenAI. Then we make a standard request and retrieve the relevant documents from the multi-vector retriever through a similarity search and send everything to the LLM. So that's the theory. Let's now have a look at how this works in practice. Okay, I'm here in VS Code and we first have to install some packages. So we will use Langchain to make the request to OpenAI and we will use Unstructured to extract all the relevant documents or relevant parts of the document from the PDFs. Then we also use Pedantic, L, XML, OpenAI, ChromaDB as our vector store and Tick token for creating our tokens. So let's run the installation. And after that, we will make use of unstructured to extract the tables, the text, and also the images from our PDF. I will show you how the PDF will look like. So this is the PDF file. To be honest, the content doesn't really matter, but as you can see, we've got some text elements, we've got images, and here we've got also some tables on the bottom. Here's, here's the table, and we want to extract all the relevant information. So the tables will not get lost and also the images will not get lost. And we will use unstructured to achieve that. Unstructured makes use of Tesseract. So we first have to install Tesseract. I will provide you the link to download Tesseract and install it in the description of that repository. Before you uh, can run the code, check first if everything works. So after installing Tetheract, you should run Tetheract minus minus version. And if you don't get an error there, then you know that Tetheract is installed correctly. So what we first do is we import partition underscore PDF from the unstructured package. And then we also set the Tetheract CMD to the path where we store our tesseract.exe. We then can run the partition PDF function from unstructured and run that over our test.pdf. It will extract all the relevant documents or parts of our document, so the tables, the images, and also the text elements. So we first have to provide the file name. I do that dynamically by providing the current working directory and then here also the test.pdf. This is where our file is stored. And then we want to extract the images in the PDF. We want to extract, extract the tables from the PDF. Then we will provide a chunking strategy and we will chunk all of the text elements by title. Very important also is the image output dir. And we will create a new uh, directory called output that we will store all of our images. So let's run this. This can take its time, maybe one and a half minutes. So let's wait a little bit. Okay, it's done. And now we've got everything stored in the raw PDF elements variable. So there are our texts and also the tables stored. And the images are stored in the output folder. As we can see, we've got one, two, three, seven images in our output directory. Now let's maybe first have a look at how this raw PDFs element variable looks like. So let's inspect that. So as you can see, we've got a list and here we can see our um, classes. So we've got the composite elements and we've got table elements. The composite element is the text and the table element is the table. So let's remove that again. And now we want to extract the relevant information. So we want to store all table elements in the list, the text elements in the list, and also all of the images in our list. For the images, we cannot just send the images as a whole to OpenAI. 
but we have to convert the image into a binary format. So we have to encode it with base64. So we read the files and then encode them into a B64 format. For the text and the table elements, we will loop over the raw PDF elements. As you saw before, we've got the classes and we can just convert that type into a string and check if composite element is in that string or if table is in that string. And if composite element is in that string, we append this to the text elements list. Otherwise, we uh, append it to the table elements list. And then after doing this, we will, of course, extract the text which is stored in the text property because we don't want to store the raw classes in, uh, in that list. So we extract that. And if you run that, we can see that we've got three table elements and we've got 24 text elements in our PDF. The images are stored in that output folder here. So we will list everything in that output path and check if it's a PNG or JPEG and then provide the full path to the encode image function. So we will read that file and encode it into a base64 format. And after that, we will append that to the image elements list. So we've got now our texts, our tables, and our images. So here we can see we've got seven images and the length of that list is seven. So that's correct. Now we can run a summary function over each of that element. So we first have to create a function, of course, to make that work. So for the text, we will create a prompt, summarize the following text. For the tables, summarize the following table. And for the images, we have to make it a little bit different because this does not work with a normal text model. So for the tables and for the text, we use the GPT-3.5 Turbo model. For the images, we have to use the GPT-4 Vision Preview model because that's the only one that can work with text and uh, with images. So here we make it like this. So we create an AI message. You are a bot that is good at analyzing images. Then we have to provide a second class from LangChain, which is human message. And here we have to provide a list. So we provide type equals text. And then here in the text, we say describe the contents of the image. And then in another dictionary, we have to provide the type, which is image URL. And inside that image URL is another dictionary. And here you can see this is the URL because we use uh, our file locally. We have to provide it like this. So this uh, is for the base64 encoding. And then we just provide the encoded image. So now let's run a code. So we created our function. And now we can create a summary for each text and for each table, and then also for the images. So this will take its time and my kernel crashed multiple times in running that before. So I will make a print statement after uh, yeah, summarizing each element. So we can see that the kernel is not crashed. Okay, now let's do this for the text element and also for the images. Okay, that worked. And in case you wondered why we use an index here, you can also remove that for your code, but I just want to make that faster. And of course, also a little bit cheaper because especially the GPT-4 model are yeah quite expensive in comparison to the GPT-3.5 Turbo model. Okay, perfect. After creating our summaries, we can now use a multi-vector retriever to store all of our documents, the summaries, and also the embeddings in that vector store. So for our vector store, we will use Chroma and then we will use also a doc store where we will store our documents, so our raw files. And here we will use an in-memory store from LangChain. And after that, we will use the multi-vector retriever class and instantiate it with our vector store, so with our Chroma vector store, our document store, and also an ID key, which we will provide later in that code. So we will just call it doc ID. Okay, then we will create a function to add documents to the retriever. To do this, we first have to create some IDs. So we will use the UID4. So this will create some UUIDs for our documents. And we will create a list of documents by creating a new list called summary docs. And we will create a new instance of the document class, which is quite important for, for LangChain. And this has got a page content attribute and also a metadata attribute, which, which is a dictionary. So in the page content, we will provide here our 
uh, summaries. And inside the metadata, we will provide one of the IDs which we created here. And then we use add documents, this is the normal function from a vector store, and add the summaries to this vector store. We also store our documents, so our raw data, in the doc store. And the link between vector store and doc store are these doc IDs. So inside the vector store, we've got that document class, which has got that metadata attribute. And here we've got our D key. And inside the doc store, we also store the corresponding doc ID. Okay, so now we've got a function to add this. And now we can add everything to that multi-vector retriever. So for the text, we will provide the text summaries here as first argument. So this is stored in the vector store and the text elements are stored in the doc store. For the tables, the table summaries are stored in the vector store and the table elements are stored in the um, doc store. For the image summaries, this is a little bit different because we cannot retrieve images and send them in combination with text to OpenAI. This does not work yet. So we also provide the image summaries inside the doc store. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but maybe in the future that will work. So now we added everything. And after adding that, we can of course retrieve that information. Okay, now let's retrieve something here from our vector store. And we use the method get relevant documents from the retriever. So we ask what do you see on images in the database. To be honest, it does not really matter what we ask here. So we get back here, the image displays a screenshot of a digital interface with three separate boxes. So this is a summary of one of the images. So not the raw images, what we get back here. And now we can use that in combination with a chat model. So we will create a new template, answer the question based only of the following context, which can include text images and tables. So this is the context which we will retrieve with that function. So this will be used under the hood. We will use a chat open AI model. And now we will use the length chain expression language here to create a new chain. So we will provide the retriever and for the question, a runner will pass through. So this will be unchanged. And here for, for the retriever, we will extract the uh, four most relevant documents for the specific question. We pass that to the prompt. The variables will be inserted and then we pass everything to the model and everything to the output parser. So this is our chain. And if we invoke that chain, so we can now ask, what do you see on the images in the database? Okay, this is the answer based on the given context images in the database display a screenshot of a digital interface with three separate text boxes. So this is the summary of one of our images. And yeah, that's how we can do multi-modal retrieval with Langchain. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.